laser sights are an essential firearms training tool, clearly correcting and improving the two most important shooting fundamentals, aiming and trigger control. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. He rode out of Louisiana territory, and with his gun slung low and his microphone held high, he brought truth to a savage land, and the legend grew, Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. All righty, back with you, Tom Gresham here. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN, or just dial Tom Talk Gun, that'll get you in here. We're talking about, well, guns, ammo, reloading, scopes, range finders, pretty much anything that has to do with guns, certainly gun safes, how to store your guns safely. If you have guns in your home and you're not sure if you're storing them safely, call us. We'll kind of do a uh, security analysis for you. We'll talk it through. A lot of things for us to cover. Uh, way back, some years ago, I was the uh, the editor of Rifle and Handloader magazines, pretty much technical journals when it comes to shooting rifles and then obviously hand loading. It was fun. It was a cool deal. But one of the uh, the high points for me was working with a fellow named Bob Hagel. If you ever get a chance, if you can find one, he had a book uh, that came out called Guns, Loads, and Hunting Tips. And it is a great uh, compilation of his writing there. If you want to know about wildcats and reloading and bullets for reloading and all that kind of stuff, it's great. The problem is it's now dated. I mean, it's really good. If you can get a copy, you ought to get it. But barring that, actually, in addition to that, there are new books out that ca- talk about all the new stuff that is out. And one of those, well, we're talking about the author right now. We'll talk to the author. John Barsness, a friend of mine, joins us right now. Uh, w- he's got a brand new book. Hey, John. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I am well. You probably are familiar with Bob Hagel's work from way back. Uh, really a good writer. Yes, I, and I have the books you just mentioned. <laughs> it's like yeah. they are in the, uh, the on the shelves, and you go back and you pull them now and then. But you just brought out your latest book, the Big Book of Gun Gack Two. So, what is Gun Gack? Well, Gun Gack is what we're doing right now. We're talking about guns, and it's oh, all okay. the detailed. Mostly, it really refer, refers to a lot of the ballistic details that a lot of rifle. Rifle loonies like to get in. Yeah, li- rifle loonies. People like you and me that will get into this stuff on a level that's just kind of nutty at times, but it makes it fun. Yeah. There, there's no end to how deep you can dive into this, is there? Oh, no. It just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Um, <laughs> and the more we talk about it, the more it deeper it gets, but that's a whole different thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was, I was looking at Hegel's book, and it's really good, but I was struck at how much has changed in the couple of decades since then, especially when it comes to the bullets we have available. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. When Bob, uh, when, well, like when he brought out his uh, Game Loads and Practical Ballistics book for American mm-hmm. Hunters right. in 1977, the only two really controlled expanding bullets readily available to Americans were the Nosler Partition and the Bitterroot Bonded Corps. Right, right. And, and now we have zillions. Yes, and, and it's like, it's almost a yawn thing when it, yeah, it's controlled expansion. That used to be a big deal, and they were hard to find. And actually, way back then, before Federal, I think Federal was the first company to load partition bullets, you had to be a hand loader if you were going to use knowledge for partition bullets. Yeah. Yeah, you had. Well, actually, Weatherby was the first company. Was it really? People bought, yeah, but not many were, people were buying. This was in the early 1960s, and it was only for Weatherby cartridge. Federal right. was the first major company. Yeah. Fascinating. Uh, yeah, you had. Otherwise, you had to hand load them, and this was, you know, this was even when I think even when Bob Hagel wrote his book in '77, you mostly had. To. Sure. All right, so here's a question for you. Uh, I mean, the big book of Gun Gack 2, it says more stuff about hand-loading and hunting rifles. And this is not like long-range competition rifles. This is hunting rifles. But the two have kind of merged. Hunting rifles are really incorporating a lot of the stuff that we have learned and the advancements we've picked up from the long-range shooting and competition world. Exactly. Yep. And we we've, we've, well, and, and these days we're even getting... Uh, bullets that are both have the 
incredibly high ballistic coefficients of mm -hmm. target bullet, but are controlled expansion. So we're getting, in some ways, the best of both worlds, especially for people who hunt more in open country. So the question now is, and this is the million-dollar question, is there a reason to hand load anymore? In many ways, not, especially if well, that's one of the reasons the 6.5 Greenmore is so popular. Mm -hmm. You can buy really pop, really accurate factory ammunition, both for match and hunting. It doesn't cost, cost much. And I know people yeah. who aren't hand loaded, yeah. even long-time hand loaders. Yes, yeah. ex exactly. I mean, basically, I have not pulled uh, the handle on a reloader for a number of years now because I just look at it and go, man, the factory ammo is so good. You know, yes, the bullets are better. But the other thing is, back 30 years ago, if you wanted a, something that was going to shoot a half inch, you had to hand load. Now, there are probably a half a dozen or a dozen manufacturers, ammo makers, who will sell you boxes of ammo that will shoot half inch. Oh, yeah. And often in factory rifles, really inexpensive factory rifles. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's kind of it, crazy. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. It's very different in the world that we grew up in and Bob Hagel grew up in. Yeah. All right, so as we look at the world now that we're in, one of the big changes, and I was going to get you to talk about this, Max, some years ago, if you wanted a flat shooting rifle, you just went with more and more velocity. Because that was, and so yep. we, were, we were all about belted magnums and big, you know, loud and boomer whomper stompers and all of that. Uh, not necessary anymore, is it? No, no, it's not necessary anymore. And though a lot, of, a lot of hunters still believe that, as soon as they hear, they hear long range, they think of high velocity. Mm -hmm. With the high BC bullets, uh, you don't need. It doesn't. You, you may not even flat. The, the new cartridges may not shoot quite as flat as the old, the high velocity cartridges. Mm -hmm. But because we have range finders, we can compensate for the range size. Exactly. And they will, yes. Well, the, the, actually, the truth of it is the the reason we wanted flat shooting cartridges was because we were guessing at the range. Exactly. We didn't know what the range was. We were using all sorts of things like estimating football fields from here to the nearest pronghorn antelope. Yeah. Right. Or, or two lines in a scope, and you were supposed to put it on the back and the belly of a critter and hope that it's a standard size critter. And, you know, yeah, exactly. good yeah. luck with that. That's kind of a plus that or minus that, 100 yards. Of, yeah, that beat the heck out of football fields. But it, it still wasn't as precise as a laser. Right, exactly. So now you got a 6.5 that shoots flat enough, hits hard enough, and the real key is can you put it on target? So what's happened to help us put bullets on target? Well, the, the, one of the, the biggest advantage of high ballistic coefficient bullets is not so much that they shoot flatter, but they retain more energy, which helps a little bit, but that they drift less in the wind. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, that's the thing we still have to guesstimate to a certain extent. Now, you can True. buy little electronic uh, anemometers you can put in your pocket. But uh, you, can't, you, you can't get a precise idea of wind like you can rank. Until so we, in, bullet, in, yeah, until we can an, do that. Until we can get our wind-doping drone that we send down range. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and working on those. Oh my gosh! You got to know somebody's doing that right now, right? That's where most of these real advances take place. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. the, the big, the big bet, yeah, the big advantage of even these moderate velocity uh, cartridges, like the six five three one, is they drift less in the wind. So if you make a little error, they in the wind estimation, they kind of make they prevent you from screwing up too much. All right, let's just a practical uh, example. If you had a condition where a a bullet from 30 years ago would drift 10 inches to the one side, okay, it's going to drift 10 inches, and you use a high BC bullet of today, and it's going to drift 5 inches, uh, basically one can miss or wound a critter, and the other one gets you the hit that, you know, now you're just sharpening your knife. Yeah, you're, you're landing the bullet in the vitals. It's, even even a, like a small deer or a pronghorn antelope has a vital area of, about the size of a volleyball. About eight mm -hmm. inches from. Exactly. You can keep that bullet in that eight-inch circle much easier with a high BC bullet. Okay. Uh, we, we, we've kind of talked around this thing. We said, yeah, maybe you know a lot of people don't need to hand load. 
But why would you hand load? Why, well, more specifically, why do you hand load and what do you do with your stuff when you're hand loading? <laughs> well, I hand load partly because it's my job, but I also still really enjoy it. Uh, and if, if in some still, it's the only way to use some of the new bullets uh, because they don't come in a factory cartridge. Right. Uh, like for instance, right now, I'm working with, well, actually, it is a factory. I've been working recently with the 6.5 PRC, which is a slightly bigger. Right. Bra- but it's a brand cartridge. new, and it's there's not that many loads available unless, you know, you get Hornady, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and it will become more popular, I'm sure. But I had to do a, I had to do a hand loading article on it, and I, and I had a gun. I had a gun rebarreled to, to fit it and everything. And I wanted to use various bullets, so that was one reason I hand load. And I also mm-hmm. found some really accurate combinations that I wasn't. I got the, the, the Hardy ammo is fantastic, yeah, but I beat it a little by a little bit in my hand loads. Now, whether this makes any difference when you shoot something the size of a volleyball, I don't know. But, uh, but it can sure give you bragging rights when you're shooting with your buddy. And I guess that would be the other thing. Hand loading still allows you to fine tune your load to that specific rifle and get the very best out of it. Yeah, and 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 then when you're in, that's and when you're sitting around talking gun jack with buddies, then you've got something to brag about. <laughs> that's right. So well, I use forty grains of uh, forty sixty four in that. And you know, oh, really okay. So, yeah. Okay. That's the kind of stuff we do. I mean, it's, it's, it's nutty, but it's the kind of stuff we do. The the book is called The the Big Book of Gun Gack 2, which means, of course, if you don't have number one, then you got to get that one as well. Uh, available oh, at. Yeah. Is, is, is your website the best place to get these rifles and recipes.com? Yeah, there's a few local gun stores here in Montana that, that sell them, but the website's the place to go. Riflesandrecipes.com, where you'll be able to get books on shooting as well as books with some recipes in them. So that's pretty cool stuff. John Barsness, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Great to talk to you, Tom. Thanks. Absolutely. Great book. Uh, I mean, this is a really, I mean, if you're into guns, if you're into rifles especially, you're going to love this. This is just way too much fun. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. Open lines for you. We're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about. guns can be a great value, but you have to know who you're buying from. What if you could buy quality used guns with a lifetime warranty from the Internet's largest online reseller? That's what you get at Dewey'sGuns.com. They stand behind every firearm purchase for life. If you have a problem, they'll either fix or replace your gun. Pistols, rifles, shotguns, and more. Check out their inventory today at Dewey'sGuns.com. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, where the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. Laser sights increase confidence, regardless of experience level. Whether you're learning the fundamentals, a seasoned shooter, or simply overcoming aging eyes, laser sights provide instant feedback, providing immediate confidence and enjoyment for a new shooter. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge. 
and learn more about why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. Jamie Lee Curtis, actress, uh, you know, loved her in True Lies. Uh, she's got a new movie, another uh, Halloween movie out. And Fox News picked up on that and said, hey, you know, she's a gun control advocate and she's, you know, she's using guns in her movie and that's hypocritical. Well, yeah, come on. She's an actress. But, but. So she came out about this and she said, hey, that's crazy, guys. I'm, I'm not anti-gun. Well, she's delusional uh, that she's decided to offer up a quick education uh, on this. She says, quote, I am vocal about common sense gun safety and gun laws. For instance, I fully support an assault weapon ban. I fully support a bump stock ban. But neither of those things are supporting a ban on guns. Wait, what? I fully support an assault weapon ban, but it need, but that's not supporting a ban on guns. Uh, delusional. What are you, you going to do? Delusional. Uh, line three. Uh, Tom is with us out of Cocoa, Florida. Hello, Tom. You're on Gun Talk. Hey, Tom. Got a question about the Aguilar 22 powderless ammo. Mm -hmm. I like to use it in a semi-automatic, um, but I know I'm going to have to change the spring out. And I'm just wondering, do they make a spring that light or something? Yeah, generally not. Uh, if you've got a, a round that has, and some 22 rounds use just a primer, like the uh, egg of the Colibri, uh, it's not going to have enough oomph to work a semi-auto gun. They also have a Super Colibri, which uses a little bit more, or it's got some powder in it. That might work, but frankly, probably not. There might be, a, if you're going trying to go subsonic, though, uh, you might try uh, Aguila's 22 Sniper subsonic. It's a 60-grain bullet going 950 feet per second. And because you've got a heavier bullet, that might generate enough um, energy to operate your semi-auto. Now, I don't know if it will, and the only way to know in your particular gun is to try it. But as far as swapping out springs, I would probably, well, are we talking about a, a, a rifle or are we talking about a, a handgun here, first of all? Well, I was thinking about buying a twenty two handgun to practice in my backyard. My grandson just turned me on to this stuff when he completed his concealed carry course. It's uh -huh. what they use in Florida to qualify indoor with. And they live in a gated community, and this stuff is super quiet. So you can shoot it in your backyard and not bother your neighbors at all. Well, let me, just, let me offer this. If you are trying to shoot quiet and you're not going to get a suppressor, I'm going to suggest, and, and they're right. I mean, I have shot the Calibri and the Super Calibri. It is stunningly quiet. I mean, it is quieter than almost anything I've shot through a suppressor. It's that quiet. You might want to consider getting a revolver, a good old-fashioned 6 or even a 10-shot twenty two revolver. Now you don't have an issue with the action and everything else. Uh, you know, if you're married to the idea of a semi-auto, then you're just going to have to test the ammo and see which one's going to work for you. Uh, I, I don't know which it will be, but you're going to try some different ones. But it is cool. And, look, I appreciate the call, sir. Thank you. It's um, very cool stuff. The Aguila Calibri and Super Calibri, uh, we were shooting. What were we shooting? We were shooting the, I think both of them, out of a rifle, not suppressed. And all we could hear was the firing pin hitting the cartridge. It would just go, tick. And then downrange, you could hear the bullet hit the target. Plop. Just hit the cardboard. And if we shot steel, then we could hear that, of course. Now, they're not real fast, and they're not for long range. But if you want to shoot quiet, this is some of the coolest ammo ever. Uh, highly recommend that you give that a try. Speaking of cool stuff, we have new guns. I mentioned last week we were going to be getting these this week, and we announced them. We did uh, videos on them. We got them on our YouTube channel, our Facebook uh, channel for Gun Talk. Take a look. Uh, first of all, Springfield Armory announced the 
XDM full-size pistol in 10 millimeter. People have been waiting for this and waiting for it, really wanting it. So we took it out, we shot it, we had a bunch of fun with it. It's available in their 525, which is a five and a quarter inch slide, and a 4.5, which is a four and a half inch slide. The 525 is their competition gun. It has a fiber optic front sight and adjustable rear sight. The 4.5 is more of a carry style gun with a ramp rear sight. Uh, both of them, obviously, you know, full size guns, 15 round uh, magazine. So 15 plus one of 10 millimeter. Then you could have a spare mag with another 15 in it. You know, for a lot of people who are, people always want to talk about bear gun. Want to want a bear gun. Well, this is your bear gun. And no, it's not a 44 Magnum, but it's not a whole lot less. If you got something like the Buffalo Bore ammo, which is really powerful, you're looking at about 720 to 750 foot pounds of energy, and that's right in there with some 44 Magnum loads for energy. Except now you're not carrying five or six rounds; you're carrying 15 plus one in a semi-auto. Yes, it's a big gun, and that's good when you shoot it because 10 millimeter full load tens are pretty snappy. Um, I didn't find it to be any more recoil than a smaller 40 cal, just kind of where it feels like to me, roughly in, in that you know that area as far as recoil goes. Shot really well, no problems. Uh, if you're going to be carrying it out where you you know you could certainly conceal carry it full size, not a problem. You can do that. I just think it's going to be a huge hit. I think people are going to love it. Uh, wow, it is. Oh, the other thing is. If you're going to carry a 10 for personal protection against two-legged predators, you want to choose your ammo carefully because you could actually get passed through, and it's a real serious issue. You would not want to use your bear loads for that. You'd want to use maybe a faster bullet that's not trapped, that doesn't penetrate as far. Just You kind of have to be aware of that. So it's just a thing. Would you consider a 10 millimeter as your everyday carry? Or would you consider this as your bear gun, 866-TALK-GUN? Also, when we come back, two new guns from Ruger and an announcement that you really want to hear. Honey, does this holster make me look fat? The right answers to the tough questions on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Ooh, ooh, I forgot to mention. Uh, I was talking about the new Springfield Armory XDM in 10 millimeter. They have two, two different models, the 525 competition model and the 4.5 inch slide, uh, more of a carry gun, ramp, rear sight. But uh, I just discovered this. Springfield has a deal going right now, one of those promotions they do occasionally, very rarely actually. If you buy any, I think it's any XDM and XD pistol, like for the next month, you can get three additional magazines plus a pistol bag. So the, let's see if I remember this right, the 525 model comes with three magazines, and the 4.5 inch slide comes with two magazines. Either one you buy, but then you can send in your, whatever it is, your uh, information on it, your apply for this package deal, and you get three free magazines. That's that's like real money. What I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if it would feed. Wonder if you could maybe get a some kind of aftermarket barrel and spring and shoot forties in it. No, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Have no idea. That's just the weird stuff we think of. By the way, big announcement from uh, Ruger on Friday of this past week. Uh, right off the bat, Ruger has announced that they are creating the first ever Ruger custom shop there will be a ruger custom shop where they're going to crank out you know uh, smith wesson has the performance center uh, other gun makers have had custom shops ruger's going to have a custom shop and they're going to crank out special models of guns and along with the news of the custom shop came news of two new guns the first ones out of the custom shop one is an sr 1911 it is their 1911 competition model a Doug Koenig model. This is a $2,500 Ruger 1911. It has all the stuff that Doug Koenig, world champion shooter, 
would want to do to his personal gun because he went in there and did all that to this stuff. And then his, this is set up for lighter competition loads. This is not a self-defense gun. This is a pure, straight-up competition gun. It's really good looking. It's got all the features you'd want. You just take this thing to start competing right out of the box with it. It's called the SR1911 competition model and and a 1022 competition rifle. And it is cool. It's got uh, a, a adjustable cheek piece on the stock. It's uh, it's got all the things you'd want to do to make a 1022 super accurate. It's a competition rifle, uh, obviously threaded. Uh, so you can take a look. It's all on the Ruger website now, Ruger.com. Neat stuff, really neat stuff. Let's see. Uh, line two, Jerry's with us out of Spokane, Washington. Hey, Jerry, what is this rifle you have? Sorry. Oh, sorry. That's right. Uh, yeah, I have a uh, Ruger gun sight scout rifle. Okay. And I used to have a Weaver 4X uh, scout scope on it. Mm-hmm. But my eyes are getting older, so I need more magnification sometimes. So I put a Vortex on it. The, mm-hmm. They're one to seven scout. Okay. With my Weaver shooting 165 grain Nosler trophy, I had absolutely no problem zeroing. Okay. But for some reason, I cannot get the Vortex dialed in. What's it doing? What's going on? Uh. At 25 yards, um, I'm two inches high, dead center. But when I go out to 100, I'm not even on paper. Okay, at 25 yards, you're two inches high. Did you adjust it down to be adjust? I mean, you want to be hitting dead on at 25 yards. Oh, I do? Yes. Okay. Well, what's, um, what's, what's probably happening, how, how big is the target you're shooting at 100 yards? Because probably you're just going right over the top of it. Uh, it's a two-foot by two-foot zeroing target. Uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be off paper because two inches at, uh, 50, at 25 yards should be uh, eight inches uh, at 100 yards, just a four-times deal. Uh, try sighting it in so you are absolutely on at 25 yards. That's going to put you still three, two to three inches high at 100 yards. So my guess is you're still going over the paper right now. Okay. Okay. And, and here's the other thing. Do you have the ability at your range to try at, start at 25 and then move the target to 50 and then back to 100? Try that and make sure you're still on paper at 50. And if you need to, do an interim adjustment to adjust this so you're absolutely dead on at 50. And then take it out and make sure you're dead on at 100. Now you can put it wherever you want, probably with a 308. Where do you like it? Like two inches high at 100 yards, something like that? Uh, I've actually always just done dead on at 100. It's my mountain and heavy woods hunting rifle. Okay, well then you're so. probably going to, if you're a dead on at 100, you're going to be shooting. An inch or two low at 25 yards, something like that would be my guess. Okay. Okay. Try that because, I mean, the Vortex makes good scopes, and it should work. Uh, if it's if you're able to dial it in at 25, you can dial it in at 100. I think you're just off paper right now. Okay. All right. Well, look, good luck. And let me know how it works out. But, yeah, that, that's good ammo. You're working with good ammo there. So let me know. Tell you what, uh, Levi, don't go anywhere. We're going to get to you as soon as we get back. i got to take a quick break, sell some soap, and we'll be right back with more Gun Talk. Maximize your firepower and accuracy with Remington's new Model 1911 R1 Limited Double Stack. Up to 19 plus 1 double stack capacity, so you can spend more time shooting and less time loading. Next level accuracy and handling with a 5-inch ramped match-grade barrel and adjustable match-grade trigger for greater precision. Learn more at Remington.com slash handguns. The new Remington Model 1911 R1 Limited Double Stack. Welcome to a new era at Remington. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. 
It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. All the refinements in Smith & Wesson's M&P M2.0 Pistol Series shrunk to a perfect carry size in the new compact version. 4-inch barrel, light crisp M2.0 trigger, aggressively textured grip for enhanced control, 4 interchangeable palm swell inserts, 2 magazines, lifetime service policy, 15-round 9mm mag, 13-round 40 mag, the M&P M2.0 Compact Pistol. More at smith-wesson.com. Back with you. Uh, we have some. <laughs> I'll get to this news in a minute. It's just the dumbest thing. Uh, but first, let's go to the phone. So, uh, line three, Levi's with us out of Midville, Idaho. Hey, Levi, range report for us. Lay it on us. Yeah, I was uh, out deer hunting yesterday, and mm-hmm. I had bought the uh, Ruger Precision 6.5 Creedmoor. Yeah. And uh, dropped my deer. Uh, at 400 yards, hard shot, handed it to a kid that had never shot the rifle before, and he had dropped his doe at 500 yards, first shot. Holy cow. And I absolutely love the weapon. All right, so talk me through, were you using a laser rangefinder? I was using the uh, Nikon, I can't remember the brand, it's the new Nikon, it's got the stabilizer in it. Okay, so you're, you're getting, was, the, uh, getting the the range on it. Now, are you holding over or are you dialing in? Uh, it was the I always zero my rifles out to 200 yards, and mm-hmm. I had the uh, Vortex Crossfire, the six to 24, mm-hmm. and uh, I just told the kid, I said, hold uh, three mill lines up on him and yep. fire away and he shot and knocked that doe down as soon as he pulled the trigger how old was this youngster this youngster was 13 wow and he had never he had never shot over 100 yards and 500 yards with the ruger precision rifle uh, just hold him hold three mil lines on where you want the bullet to hit and just Give it a good trigger press. Yep. Yeah. I said, take a deep breath, let out, and uh, pull the trigger. And he dropped that doe. How long have you had that uh, RPR? Uh, I have had it over a year. I bought it in uh, North Carolina. A uh, guy had given me a deal. I bought it for twelve hundred. That's and good. I was. I, yeah, every place else I had seen it for 15 and this guy gave me a deal. And I spent some money on it, put a good scope on it, and uh, some good mounts, and I have been absolutely happy with it. All right, let me ask, i got to ask you a question, Levi. Are, I'm not sure where you're hunting exactly. A lot of people would look at the Ruger Precision Rifle and say, well, it's a nice target gun, but that's not really a hunting rifle. You're not, like, hiking up the mountains with that big beast, are you? Uh I'm uh, I'm actually over the hill from McCall, where you're always hanging out at. Right. I, I always run around West Mountain. But, no, I was shooting out, of, out, out in the hay field. Okay, yeah, because um, there's some big, big hay fields out there. Are you over on the council side of uh, West Mountain? No, Midvale, straight across to Nover Got from you. McCall. Uh, okay. Due west. Man, that's uh, so. Yeah. By the way, Jim points out 500 yards. You can tell that youngster that he got that deer at more than a quarter mile. Yep. Yeah. He was. I'll tell you what. You'd never seen a kid jump up and so excited. He. <laughs> he was happy. All right. So, what ammo are you using? I am using the uh, Hornady. Hornady, uh, 140 grains. Okay. Uh, have you taken any other deer or any other critters with that uh, ammo? Uh, yeah, I was uh, shooting rock chucks um, with it. Well, that, off rocks. 
That's that's real good practice. If you can uh, take rock chucks, which are, you know, you know, you're looking at 10 pounds in that ballpark, uh, you can certainly hit deer with it. Yes, yes. I, uh, the, I got a quick story for you. A guy had brought his little girl up. Mm-hmm. He was having her shoot a uh, kid-size 308 uh, Ruger rifle. Mm-hmm. And the girl was um, flinching really, really hard every right. time she pulled the trigger. And she would complain about it uh, hurting her. Right. And I actually handed her that same rifle. She missed, but it didn't hurt her. And I had told him, I said, you know, you ought to go get a smaller rifle and then work maybe back up to the 308 so she stops flinching. Well, all right, here's a question for you. If you can kill every deer that walks the earth with a 6.5 Creedmoor, why do you need a 308? Yeah, I, well, I for the last four years I've killed all my deer with my AR-15 223. With a 223, yeah, exactly. And when you drop back down from the 308, you're starting to reduce recoil. You know, with a 223, you have essentially no recoil. A 6.5, it's less, a lot less recoil than a 308. I think we all have to kind of rethink what a hunting rifle cartridge is these days. Don't you, Levi? Yes, I do. Um, I've killed deer out to 500 yards with my AR-15. Isn't that something? And now and now we have good hunting bullets for them. And for those who say, yeah, these things aren't good for hunting, you go, really? Well, we got tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people hunting with AR-15 successfully all the time. Sounds pretty good to me. So there you go. Levi, thank you so much. Those are actually two great uh, range reports, exactly what we're trying to get out here. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Out of uh, a neighboring state, out of uh, Montana, Senator John Tester. Fascinating story. Uh, John Tester running for re-election. Um, he just not got downgraded by the NRA to a D rating because he voted against Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah, he also voted for Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan. He voted against Justices Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. And yet he says that he is a good Second Amendment guy. The NRA saying not so fast. But here's the, the interesting part of this. He is proclaiming that what makes him a Second Amendment guy is because he has killed hundreds of hogs and I'm not talking about feral hogs, wild hogs. I'm talking about shooting hogs in a pen and hundreds of cows. Yeah, like moo cows. He makes a living as a butcher. So he says, shooting hogs and cows in a pen makes him a Second Amendment guy. Except that he voted against justices now, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh. So then I said, no, I don't think so, and gave him a D rating. <laughs> Several of the folks on <laughs> on social media are calling Tester a cow assassin. <laughs> okay. All right, come on. I mean, it's meat. You know, you got to have the meat anyway, right? But there it is. Uh, it's just fascinating what's going on there. The election, 21 days away, midterm election coming up. It's changing, I think, right now, and I, if you really get geeky about this, you want to kind of see what's going on, go to the website Real Clear Politics, because they do a, uh, a compilation or an average of a lot of the polls out there, and you can see what's going on day to day. Right now, if we were to believe the poll, polls, uh, the Republicans are going to hold on to the Senate. The House is in jeopardy significantly, less so than it was. It was uh, worse two weeks ago, and it's getting better now. We still have 21 days to turn that around. Of course, these are still the same pollsters who told us that Trump had, quote, no path to victory, and Hillary Clinton was a shoe in I think they had already ordered the new drapes, which probably is what ticks them off so very much and why they're so angry these days. Boy, are they ever angry. 866-TALK-GUN. What are you shooting? Give me your range report. Be right back.
All right, coming up in a few minutes, uh, if you've ever thought about buying a machine gun, we're going to have all the information on what's involved, what should you get, how much do they cost, how does it work, the whole drill. We'll have all that information for you coming up in about 10 minutes, all right? All right, right now, well, yeah, by the way, we have room for you right now. Uh, open line. Give us a call, 866-TALK-GUN. Line 3, TJ's with us out of North Dakota. Hello, TJ, you got a range report for us? Yeah, Tom, uh... I guess my pet rifle is my 308 Norma Magnum. Well, that's interesting. What uh, what brand rifle is it? Well, it's on a Mauser action with a Douglas barrel. It got built from the ground up. Nice. How long you had that? Uh, I suppose about 18 years now. Now, did you have it built or did you buy it already completed? I bought it all shot out and I rebuilt it from there. Oh, because a lot of people don't know the 308 Norma, basically a uh, a 300 Magnum or a 375 H&H, either which way. Uh, it's a 300 H&H, and it's been trimmed down. It's kind of a uh, the biggest 300 Magnum they could put into a standard length Mauser action, right? Yep. I'm shooting 190 grain bullets because of the 1 and 9 twist barrel. Mm-hmm. So what kind of velocity are you getting? Uh, depending on the load, usually it's in that 29.75 to a little bit faster range. Ooh, that's, that's pretty impressive out of that cartridge. That's that's smoking. Uh, 78.28 shortcut. Uh, let, give me an idea. What uh, critters have you taken? I take it that's your hunting rig. So what have you taken with your 308 Norma Magnum? Well, I built it so I could go hunting elk, and I never got a draw on elk, but I, I baptized it with uh, Nevada mule deer and Nevada antelope. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're talking 400 yards for the mule deer and, and about 350 for the antelope. Well, I mean, it is, after all, a 300 Magnum, and it will do anything a 300 Winchester Magnum will do. And the, and the reason people don't really know about the 300, uh, the 308 Norma is because shortly after it kind of was introduced, I think Schultz and Larson was the uh, outfit that first chambered it, uh, the 300 Winchester came out and just pretty much just wiped it off the map. And so now it's kind of the purview of rifle loonies like you and me. Well, thank you. <laughs> we are. It takes one to know one, man. <laughs> yeah, no, it uh, put a muzzle brake on it, pained it down a little bit. It's uh, it's a sweetheart to shoot, though. Well, yeah, it, it tames down the recoil, but, man, it makes it louder, too. So uh, that that's an issue. Well, I can't hear very well anyhow, so what the heck. <laughs> Figure, why, why worry now, right? Too late, yep. All right. Great report. I love it. A 308 Norma Magnum. I have not heard about that in quite a while, but uh, that is a good one. And if you could, here's the thing if you can find one, if you see one at a store and people, nobody wants to buy it because they go, oh, that's weird. I don't know. Jump all over it, man. It's a good caliber. It will ta- absolutely do the thing for you. Tell you what, uh, Chris and Brian, don't go anywhere. We're going to get to you guys. Uh, I appreciate your patience. Also, when we come back, if you've got a question about mach- machine guns or if you are a machine gun guy or gal, maybe you want to give us a call as well to weigh in on this because we're going to be talking about, well, what's it take to buy a fully automatic? And yeah, by the way, for people who still don't get it, they are perfectly legal. You just have to go through the paperwork and do your deal. In most states, you know, you got no new state laws. But we'll talk about that. Is it legal? What's involved? How much do they cost? And, oh, yeah, are machine guns a good investment these days? Some say yes. Some say no. We'll give you the skinny on that. Our number, 866-TALK-GUN. When we come back, we're going full auto right here on Gun Talk. 